When I'm organizing files, I always split into two different people. One is present me. Who wants to be able to categorize those files as quickly as possible with minimal effort. And the other one is future me. who wants to be able to retrieve those files as quickly as possible thanks to a very organized system. Now, it's impossible to please both people. You need to find a compromise. And that's the question that we're gonna try and answer today. What is that compromise? What is the best way to categorize files. So when I had to decide my organizational style, I went through a series of principles. Principle number one is that organization is very personal. It depends on a series of things that we're going to explore later on, including your personality. You can't simply copy what other people do. The second principle is that the perfect system does not exist. So you need to apply the Pareto principle here that says that you basically want a system that covers 80% of your needs. And the other 20% you accept may not work on occasion, and you may have to step in with some additional intervention. The third principle is that complexity must be avoided unless it's necessary. So start small and then build your system up and increase the complexity only when and if it's needed. So with the key principles out of the way, these are some questions you need to ask yourself to define your organizational style. Question number one is, how many files do you need to file? The higher the number, the higher the organizational effort. Number two, how often do you need to retrieve those files? If this happens rarely, then you can lean towards a more minimalistic organizational style. And probably the search function can help you find whatever you need with no effort at all. Question number three is, are your files easy to isolate or silo? You definitely don't want to have files that could belong to several folders. Next, do you share your files and folders? If you do, then more organization is required to allow them to be able to find your files. And then number five, in terms of personality, do you get frustrated if you don't find immediately the things you're looking for? The answer to the first two questions creates a matrix like this one. On one axis, we have the volume of files you need to categorize from low to high. And on the other axis, we have the retrieval frequency, again, from rarely to often. This creates four situations, four quadrants that we can explore, starting from the top left one, which is when you have um, lots of files, but you rarely retrieve them. In this case, you can get away with minimal filing effort. The second situation, which is one level up in terms of filing efforts, is the one where you have low number of files that you retrieve rarely. In this case, you may want to categorize these things for easier retrieval. One level up again, you've got a medium filing effort, when you have a few files that you retrieve often, and then one level up, the maximum level of filing efforts, when you have lots of files that you retrieve very often. And that is a case where you may want to consider having a very complex folder structure. In my case, I'm on the left side of this graph. Uh, the number of files that I save and store and categorize every year is around a thousand, probably less. So definitely not a high number, but more importantly, I retrieve those files, I realized, fairly rarely. And I think many people fall in this category as well. If you, if you look at your um, hard disk, you may discover that the number of files you actually store is fairly low. So looking at this matrix, I realized what the perfect organizational strategy is for me. The first thing that I do is that I only use one single folder per year. I create a folder at the beginning of the year, in this case called 2024, in which I store every file that I need to categorize this year. I don't use any subfolders unless in very specific circumstances. Typically, when I have a very quick project that will be opened and closed in a matter of days. Like this YouTube video, for example, every um, the piece of video and audio and effects and sounds will be stored in this folder just for one or two days. And once the video is released, I don't open that folder anymore. The second thing I did was to define um, a naming convention, which I apply very consistently. And it's what I call the four W's. The four W's are when, who, what, and where. When is the date I either received the file or the file was originally created. The date is structured in uh, ISO format, so starting with the year and then the month and then the day. So when I sort my directory, 
they will sort um, properly. The reason why I put a date directly in the file name instead of leveraging the file system, you know, sourced by date created or date modified and so on, is that A, it's easy for me to see the date this way, but more importantly, if I scan a document, which is an old document, if I scan it today, I will still put the date of the document as, you know, the original date. It could be 1980s, whatever. Maybe it's a very old document. I want to store it using that date. The second W is who. And this is the sender of the file, the author of the file, maybe a client. And I don't put anything if the file is originated by me. The third W is the what. It's a description of what's in the file. And it's something that I write using my own words to make sure that my future self will be able to search for something using my natural language and find the file. The fourth W is where, which is an indication of where we are with this file, at what stage we are. Something that other people could call a version, for example. If you look at these three examples, the first file is called 2024-04-24, so this is April um, 2024. The who is the tax authority who sent me this letter. The content, the description of, of what is inside the file is, it's a request to file a tax return. And then there is nothing else because there is no stage for this file. The second file is from 2024 09 so September of 2024. It is from my accountant and it's about my tax return for 2024. In this case, there is a where in this file, which is the stage this thing is at, which is it's a draft to sign. And then the third file um, has a date, 2024-10-01. It is a file originated, uh, created by me, so there is no indication of the author, but there is an indication of the content. And this is the tax return 2024, and the stage is signed. In the future, I may be looking for a tax return 2024 signed, or signed tax return, or signed 2024, and I will be able to retrieve this specific file. The next things to cover are tags and folders. So I use tags on occasions, not very often, but they are useful to um, group things together. And although I accept I'm not gonna be very consistent with using uh, tags, so I know that I will have to manually search for additional things, using a tag is a good starting point. For example, I collate um, uh, everything that could be related to my tax return in the 2024 folder. And if I remember to do it, I tag these things as tax 2024. As I said, I accept the fact that I may not be as consistent as I want, but it's gonna be an initial uh, starting point. When at the end of the year, I need to send my stuff to my accountant, I look for the tag, and that's an initial list of files that I will, uh, I will send him. And then I can search for additional things but that's gonna be easy as well because everything will be in a single folder called 2024. When it comes down to folders, I use very, very few folders. On many occasions, I have no subfolders in my 2024 um, uh, folder. There are only a few situations where I use subfolders and these are normally when I'm working on a specific time-bound project that only takes one or two days. Like for example, this video. I'm recording it, everything goes into a subfolder specific for this video. I'm gonna complete the video tomorrow, and once I've uploaded the video, I'm not gonna to touch that folder anymore. The last thing that I decided was to use the search function very heavily. The search function can find things way quicker than I can. There is no need for me to traverse all my uh, folder structure or look at maybe 100 or 200 files. The search function can really look for it and find it in the blink of an eye. Plus, the search function can actually read inside of documents. It's not limited to the title, to the file name. It can actually read in, inside of PDFs, text files, and so on. So it can give me a much better set of results if I'm looking for something. So this system works extremely well for me. It covers 80% of my needs very well. And for the other 20%, as I said at the beginning, I can compensate with some additional effort. If I'm looking for a very tricky file, I may spend an hour uh, looking for it in my, um, in my folder structure but I'm happy with this setup because the 80 the efficiency gain that I get from the 80% overcompensates whatever I may lose in the other 20%. How well does your system work? Let me know in the comments below. For now, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.